This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to be talking about installing internet access at our repeater sites. Lots of projects to take advantage of internet, but we've got to get it there first. What solution do we choose this week on El Cara Ham Radio? Welcome back to El Cara, and uh, this week we're going to be talking about internet connectivity at our repeater locations. Currently, we have zero, count them, zero internet connectivity at either of the repeater locations, our main site and the abandoned repeater site. And that really is okay. We still have RF connectivity. Mainly, that's what ham radio clubs are all about, is providing the community access to radio communications. But... Internet access opens up other possibilities, and uh, we've been wanting internet connectivity for quite some time at our locations. So let's take a look at some of the options that we've considered, and then we'll roll into what we're actually going to do. One of the first things we considered was some type of mobile hotspot. Mobile hotspots are quite common today. Uh, 4G and 5G options are available. Biggest disadvantage to mobile hotspots in a rural area like Kentucky is just getting a good connection. And the cost, you're looking at $40 and up every month just to have that internet connectivity. A satellite link is also a possibility where you might use something like HughesNet. The downside there is latency. If you're gonna do any form of voice over IP, especially some of the digital communication options that we have like DSTAR and Fusion, not going to be the greatest utilizing a satellite option and the monthly cost. A ubiquity link is also an option where you can actually pipe in internet connectivity from a remote location to the current location using dishes, terrestrial dishes. We'll look at that a little bit later. And a DSL connection, which is essentially a phone connection up at the site, which we used to have no longer. Now, what are some of those potential future projects? Digital radio activities like digital uh, modes of communication on um, the repeaters themselves are quite common today. D-Star, Fusion, and DMR are three of the most common. Cross-band gateways, remote maintenance options as well, where you can reset power supplies and reboot equipment if you needed to do so. The ability to remote in and utilize a radio at the location, but not having to be at the location. Remote monitoring. Security cameras, these uh, shacks are in remote locations and you can't keep your eye on them all the time. And a weather station where we can actually keep track of weather. Uh, what's not on here is also potentially an APRS beacon, for instance. So there's lots of really nice options, uh, projects for a ham radio club to get into if you have internet access at the repeater site. So let's take one of those solutions, which in our case is going to be the Ubiquity link. The Ubiquity uh, solution is to set up a couple of dishes. We're going to have a receive dish. Essentially, it's receive and transmit, but we're going to set up a dish on our tower, and it's going to connect to a dish at about 20 miles away, 22 miles away, where there's actual high-speed internet access. And so you can actually pipe in your internet by utilizing these two terrestrial dish options from Ubiquity. Uh, we have a, a, a gentleman in the community who does this for a living. And so he's gonna climb the tower and he's actually gonna install one of the dishes here on our 100-foot tower at our primary site, which we like to call the 88 site. Now folks, just because this guy does for a living doesn't mean that safety is not paramount. And anytime you're climbing a tower, you want to make sure you have good harnesses, people that are watching what you're doing, and the ability to shuttle equipment up utilizing um, uh, uh, ropes and pulleys and things of that nature. Uh, and you want to make sure you take your time and you want to make sure that it's not a windy day and so on. So. Um, the gentleman here is taking all of those precautions and in fact the harness that he is using has a seat built in where you can actually sit down because you're going to be up there for quite a while and you don't want to put a lot of strain on your arms or your hands. In this shot you can see the dish 
was already installed on the tower. And now you can see the cable, the KY4CKP's fingers are next to there, coming down from the dish and will be coming into the shack where we'll actually have what's called a POE, which is a power over ethernet injector, uh, which powers the dish and allows us to see the signal coming back down. The final shot on this first day, we have the dish installed and it's mostly aligned with the dish in the distance, but we weren't quite sure what that connectivity was going to be like. So on that first day, we connected a laptop and uh, we had some signal, but it wasn't great. So we needed another day and another uh, potential uh, extension arm so that we could move the dish over to the left a little bit to get a better signal. So on the second day, that's exactly what we did. We connected the laptop just to double check the alignment uh, to see how much we needed to move. And so on the second day, uh, our gentleman climber, our tower monkey, if you will, climbed the tower again to install the extension arm and to put the ubiquity dish on that arm so that we can actually orient it closer in alignment to the dish that's about 22 miles away. So we're back up on the tower. He's back up there at the very top and we're going to install the extension arm and then install the ubiquity on that arm. Now you can see the extension arm just below the dish being installed. We don't have the dish on the arm just yet, but getting that extension in place was critical. And now we have the dish uh, extending on that arm and we can now move the dish in a more closely aligned uh, direction with the far away uh, version of it where the internet access is going to be. So this should improve our signal strength significantly. And sure enough, take a look at our signal strength. Uh, minus 60 dB, which is way up into the blue there. Uh, that's actually really, really good. And the noise floor is also quite good. So let's run some tests. Uh, one of the uh, uh, common speed tests when you have internet access is uh, speed test. So we're gonna run speed test here on, uh, on his laptop and let's see what kinds of numbers we can get. And remember, we had no internet access um, before the day started, not really. Now we're getting a download of about 13 megabits per second, a little bit better than that actually, which is actually quite good for what we're wanting to use internet for. We're not trying to watch movies or anything. We're talking about digital repeaters, APRS, and some other projects. Now the upload here is not nearly as much as we had hoped for. And so we were double checking some of the numbers. The transmit um, bandwidth, if you will, was quite a bit lower than the receive, probably because we still need to do some further alignment of the dishes and a little bit of software tweaking on the internet side. We also ran a second internet speed test just to see if we got uh, roughly the same kinds of numbers. And sure enough, the download speed was quite good for our needs, but uh, uh, upload speed was not anything to write home about. And then we'll one, run one more speed test uh, utilizing speedtest.net uh, just to double check those numbers one more time. This is the secondary test. And in fact, we got an error on that test for the upload. Uh, latency, about 36 milliseconds, which again, for our needs would be fine. But let's run speed test one more time and let's see what kind of numbers we're looking at. I think speed test gave us uh, slightly better numbers, but uh, utilizing both of those kind of gives you an idea of where you are. So this is utilizing a server that's nearby. Our ping test, once we scroll back up there, is actually better on this particular test. A ping, for those of you that don't work in IT, is the uh, ability to reach out to the remote server and come back. And uh, you want it down in the low milliseconds. This one is 17. That's actually really good. Really, really good for a remote location. And again, our, our upload, or in this case, excuse me, download speed is about 13 to 15 megabits per second, which again, for our needs would be great. It's gonna be the upload speed that we're gonna need to work on here. It is there, it's just not great. We could still you know, surf the web with this connection because mostly it would be download if we were just looking at web pages. Uh, we're not uploading very much. So we now have internet access, we just need to dial it in a little bit. So this is going to allow us to bring on some additional projects. So stay tuned 
time for part two of installing internet connectivity and uh, we'll get some things dialed in see what those final numbers are and then talk about some of those early future projects that will take advantage of the internet access 73 